crystal meth, very big in uh, the LGBT community. And it comes with its own dental plan. I tried that once, like uh, I tr the, the drugs that I ever tried, like I would call uh, weed, meth, crystal meth, and what do you call this, uh, cocaine, uh, I did try. And fortunately, I was I was lucky. I didn't I did not get addicted to it. You know, it just make me horny. You know, when I was in a relationship, for sexual purposes, I would use uh, weed. Oh wow! So so weed does keep you high, is it? Like it keep you? It's a it's a downer. So meaning like it makes you mellow. Yeah, for me too. Like like that's the experience of of weed. Uh, really, <laughs> it keeps you gives you more you want to get into sleep than getting into sex <laughs> if you were going to be in a gangbang and you were the one receiving all this love i would say weed is the one oh, i did not i didn't know that cocaine i've never tried that one and you know why because the price tag uh oh. they come in this tiny little bag about that big and it's like 40 dollars for that which I can do, I don't have a big nose, but I can do it in one second. So I've never tried it just because I know I would love it and I'll have it to have it and I, my whole paycheck would go on it. Like in, in Malaysia, it's like 200 uh, for a gram, but if they caught you, you're dead. You're dead. Like dead penalty, dead, dead. Like. Oh, I heard about that too. Do you, they would kill the drug dealers and the do drugs? Mm-hmm. So if you do drugs, they'll kill you as well. Uh, in Malaysia, no, do no, you you get rehab. Uh, but if you if they caught you selling, you're in deep trouble. Like they can prosecute you without without uh, uh, any going to the court or something like that. They can just hang you up in Malaysia and Singapore. Yeah. What did, was your experience? Your cocaine experience? I was in Bangkok. Yeah, here, here, somewhere here, and and. My first time taking it was like, I did, uh, my nose was quite sensitive, you know, when I sniff it in, my nose was like, uh, it couldn't go into my system. So I did not feel anything uh, while I was uh, sniffing it. But after the, the, the day after like the morning, in the morning when I came back home and I sleep, you know, and, and, and I have a routine of doing meditation. So when I wake up, when I meditate, I take a deep breath in. I said, wow, so fast. I, I, I'm... I'm already at enlightenment stage, you know, I'm feeling so great through the meditation. I was like, wow, this, this is the best breathing exercise I ever take. It cleanses your, but you know, they cut it with uh, rat poison. So it could have been the rat poison. So uh, it, did you, do your family has, has addiction problem? Like that? Yeah, I don't know the rest of the family, but that I'm afraid that I will have one hit of cocaine and it'll be like, that's it. That's all I have to live. I have to live like a cocaine addict forever. You know, uh, my what what did my mom did before I was born? You know, uh, they were they were two. You know, two. They were doing business in two next to each other, two different family business, and then one they were selling fish stock. You know, so uh, the customer came and and look at ours and look at the next door, and they decide to buy from next door. And when my mom didn't like it, took a butcher knife, really cut. The, the next door seller of nearly the hand goes off here, cut here. A butcher knife, you know. That sounds like uh, The Sopranos, payback. You, oh, yeah. you took my customer, I have to pay you back. Serial killer type stuff. Uh, when, when, when they cut off someone, they should have felt empathy later, you know, like, oh, wow, I did something wrong. I'm sorry. No, she, she felt that it was okay. It was so right doing that. You know, that's some, I think that's considered category and of narcissism. this is your mom you're talking about right yeah so, your mom, yeah. so you're going to be the knife person you're going to get a butcher knife do you have that feeling that you're going to become that person yeah I, I thought of that like do i have the gene passed down to me as well like i remember when i was in school i was i got into a fight i practiced martial arts and then uh, when i fight this this person right and i really knock him out you know and mm -hmm. later on i felt bad about it like hey you know what <laughs> Let's let's just tell you, you need to go to the hospital. Let me send him to hospital, you know, like to patch it up or something like that. You know, I felt bad, you know. You you beat compassion. You beat somebody up. Yeah. Like that takes like a, he, that take a lot of hospital. Trained for martial arts. So uh that guy has no really like not 
Like no, I say no match. I say it was easy to take him down. Yeah, and you felt bad later for what you did. You know, like crap. <laughs> I'm a recovering narcissist, where now I mm-hmm. still want to be the center of attention, but only in small little bites. Like I want to be the center of attention. Then I'm okay. I'm done. Let me go in the corner now. And I also have empathy since I started meditation. So, like, I feel sorry for everyone for not being as great. So that's the reason why you didn't you didn't you did not take uh, what you call this action for what happened to the guy who pushed you. Uh, yes, I got pushed okay. in, in the and when I was in the train, and it's more like that was my Chris Rock moment. Somebody, three hundred pounds. I'm only one hundred fifty pounds, and uh, assaulted me. I was like, oh. I could say something, but I decided not to do anything. And I had more empathy for him, for his actions. He was like, maybe he's having a bad day. Maybe he ate too much Taco Bell. You, you could have gone for the video, not to revenge. You come here and make a comedy out of it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a funny video. All right, on that note, let's start the show. The Buddha was a philosopher, mediator, spiritual teacher, and religious leader. His main teachings focus on his insight into dukkha, meaning suffering, and into nirvana, which means the end of suffering. Practice the middle way. The Buddha says, The root of suffering is desire. Siddhartha Gautama spent the rest of his life reflecting on the four noble truths. One there is suffering. 2. The cause of suffering is our desires. 3. The solution to our suffering, then, is to release ourselves from our desires. And 4. The noble eightfold path that leads us to our release from suffering. He realized that life was far from perfect, and people often try to distract themselves from realities by seeking material attachments like wealth, fame, and honor. He had the chance to experience this firsthand, being born into a very wealthy family. Before his enlightenment, he walked out of his palace for the first time and saw the three harsh realities. Poverty, sickness, and death. Embracing asceticism, he later tried to escape the internal sufferings by depriving himself of any material comfort and need. But how do you get to the middle? And it's also about it's denying yourself the want if you want stuff. Like when I go to a movie and I see like a Marvel movie, I, do, I don't watch any of the previews. So my expectations are really low. So lower your expectations. That's what I got out of that. What did you get out of that? It's like Yu Wang. You, 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 you're, you're trying to chase after things that, that uh, because you're comparing to each other. Like, like how, how do, how, why do I want to get rich? Because I saw someone getting rich and, and they were promoting their lifestyle. It was so great. And I see that and I want that too. That's more like, that's kind of desires. And then if I chase it, you know, I didn't know that this guy came out on the hard way. He works his ass off and all stuff. And by the time when I get in, I work my 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 head off, you know, and I'll be like, why am I doing this so tiring? And then end up, you know, I have all this money right now. I have paid the hospital because of the suffering that I'm getting. You know, my, my body cannot withstand all those stress that a person can do. You know, those are... That's why he said suffering begins from there. You suffer because you want too much. I I always found this a bit paradoxical. The this uh, freedom from desire, freed from desire, mind and senses. Yeah. No. Uh, because it's like desire is also what makes us achieve so many things. Yeah. Like. Of course, it creates to suffering that I understand. It leads to suffering when you desire and when, do, when you identify like, oh, I want, my life is not worth if I don't achieve this or I will never happy if I don't achieve this and so on. But at the same time, I think uh, you need like some really strong desire in order to, I mean, you can't live a normal life without having some strong desire. But if you consider all the people that, have transformed the world, you know, achieved something, you know, they were 
okay, maybe they are not happy, maybe they suffer, but they have some strong desires, yeah, to achieve something. So I don't know how to how, how, how to balance the two. So how can you be driven without having desire, for example? So if you find your passion and purpose, let's say becoming a millionaire was part of your passion and purpose, you, you chase it, it doesn't feel like you, you, you are suffering. You feel like you're enjoying that, that movement there. You know, like, like you, you're a runner, you know, so you, you, you do it. When you wake up, you know, you don't mind running for a few miles an hour because running is your passion. You know, you don't feel it. You're leaving, you know, at the end of the life, uh, you're, when you're 80 years old, you look back, it's like, wow, I did running, you know, I, I didn't regret doing it, you know. Like, let's move to Saif. Saif, you have something to say? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, um, there's like three different quotes, like over the years, I've come across a lot of great sayings by different people over the years. Uh, like one... I don't know if this is attributed to Buddha, but it was a quote by Buddha, which is, life is suffering. And I think in relation to that is Mark Twain aptly said, there are two great days in a man's life, the day he is born and the day he knows why. And then Shakespeare said, the path of true love never did run smooth. So I think, you know, it, like having me personally having been born into a wealthy family and then over the journey of our family's history seeing the finances suddenly vanish for circumstances beyond our control you learn straight away that you know sometimes there's a lot to be said about like you know the cause of anxiety or depression is that desire to always like you know want to have what everyone else has so like when the as a gamer myself when you see like all these people getting their ps5s and their xboxes and whatever and like you know other gamer friends of mine and family will be like are you gonna get a ps5 we're like no i wait three years and they go what and i go i wait three years i wait for the third generation of that console for three reasons one they've worked out all the glitches that they don't you know want to tell you about in the first or second two they tend to sometimes be a little cheaper in the third year oh, and yeah, yeah. and three and most importantly um you can sometimes get a smaller one so like if you look at the ps2 when it first came out it was this big huge looks like a dvd player right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then in its third year the third model of it it was like literally just like that it was smaller than a Nintendo Switch. It's, it's like literally so slender, so sleek in design. I think desire should be cancelled, okay? I think desires <laughs> to be cancelled. You know, one of my greatest desires is to cancel everyone so that they can be rid of all their desires, so that they can be rid of their suffering, okay? Life is suffering. Why not get cancelled? You know, that's my desire. I love cancelling people. That is my passion. I go on... Twitter, I go on Facebook, I go on Reddit, I go on Pornhub, I cancel everyone because that <laughs> brings me passion. He's a, he's a good philosophical quote I, I read across my cancel travels and it says, uh, it's a Hindi quote which I will translate because I don't want to get cancelled and it says, Kehte hai, agar kisi cheez ko dil se chaho, to puri kainat Translation, wow. if you ever wish for something with a pure heart, with a true mind, with a true heart, then the whole universe will try to make that happen. And it will make all those, it will work hard to get that uh, thing happen for you. I believe Siddhartha, who, was, who Buddha was in the start, came from a warrior class and it's interesting that warriors are always trying to find peace hmm. so like say i'm shocked to find out i came from an affluent family because it was so tragic and psychotic that we were all trying to survive so the affluence really didn't filter down so uh buddha pretty much said hey keep it even be cool see that's too simple, huh?
Buddha's one I like him teaching the teaching of him is being selfless. You know, in history, I have I seen a lot of selfless people has been very successful, like uh, Mother Teresa and and some of the you know uh, Princess Diana. They are very selfless. It's like they've been going out giving charities and all stuff. And the more they gave, they, they become even more famous. Like like fames and all stuff just goes to them. But when they're doing it, they are not looking for it. They are not looking for the desire. I want to be famous one day. They just do it. And then as soon as we, they reach the, I mean, the more selfless thing they do, the more successful they become. When you give to the society, you don't become fat. And I don't know how much true or untrue that is. Uh, but a lot of Indian movie producers, they're very fat. And we know that we know for a fact that they do not uh, give back to charity. They do not uh, donate to uh, essential causes. And the actors who donate to essential causes, the good actors who donate to essential causes, they are still in shape. I mean, steroids are effect, but they're still in shape. <laughs> the Germans have a lovely proverb. It goes, "Alles hat ein end, aber ein Wurst hat zwei," which means everything in life has an end, but a sausage has two ends. <laughs> so oh. it's sort of like you could Arabize it, be like "Alles hat ein end, aber ein Kebab hat zwei." You know, like it's basically, you know, like you know you're gonna die, so just eat the kebab, the sausage, enjoy life. Oh yeah, oh, I love that thought. Yeah. What if you're a vegetarian? Yeah. And enjoy a vegetarian to... sausage. <laughs> they exist. You can fill it with what you want. You can you fill the casing yourself if you're making yeah. it yourself. Greg's in London does a beautiful, beautiful vegan sausage roll. And as a Muslim that's tasted a pork sausage roll, I can tell you <laughs> it tastes exactly like the real thing. Like <laughs> I'm so fucking impressed. I was like, God damn, you could fool you could fool a Christian with this. <laughs> by the way this show is not this podcast is not sponsored by vegan sausages but hey if you are listening to vegan sausages you have greg's in sponsor. london if you want to sponsor me please do because if you go on the internet just enough you get just enough and then you just want more just enough and then it just adds up so you can't really stay in the middle I mean, it depends. Like, like for me, I need a new clothes to do a show, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, performing in some show, then uh, con constantly wearing the same clothes, then I want to change it sometime, you know. Yeah, you could do that. But, you know, you don't have to go and buy a Gucci brand show, you know. Serene, it's off. called retail therapy. Just treat yourself, girl. Just have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Be free. <laughs> Psychology has this, uh, psychology and Buddhism have been working mm. together in a way and there's this theory which is, suppose if I have ice cream now and after I eat ice cream, I feel happy. But does that mean before I ate the ice cream, I was not happy? And after I ate the ice cream and after that happiness is gone, do I become unhappy again? Uh, so what is that... Uh, state so this is a question a lot of psychology uh, students ask actually a feeling from the inside first before the outside feeling abundant like the, if you read that book uh, the law of attraction the secret uh, before we feel before we able to get abundance from outside we have to feel from the inside before happiness comes from outside we have to feel from the inside uh, we are complete we are we are like we don't need others to to you know, to make us happy. We are happy by ourselves already. Like, have you seen the firstborn, you know, firstborn, two, three years of the kids, you know, you don't, you never give them ice cream. They will be happy later on. They will cry for a few <laughs> minutes and then they, they, they're happy later, right? That's how human it is. But because we're conditioned to, to, to think that, oh, now as an adult, if I don't eat ice cream, I'll be sad, I'll be moody. I'll, we are letting our minds running us instead of we running our minds. That's the problem there. Find happiness in the things you already have, sort of. And all the people, you know, who go into, who become foodies or, you know, like uh, become, uh, 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 how do you say, sommelier and, you know, study the, the most delicious wine. And I mean, some people Tasting are even become, beers. Yeah, yeah, sommelier for water. You know, there are people who are doing that. And he says like, that is like the surest way to, 
to be unhappy in, in life is like, you know, to seek the best in everything. Uh, so maybe that's one idea. It's a bit tough. I, I know with all the, maybe the Greek philosophers, when they were thinking of that, you know, they didn't have us even like 10% of the temptation we have now. So <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's very hard, you know, when you have so, so many things pushed into your face, like uh, on the streets and social media and whatever. So it will, I would have liked to see how they would survive these stoics uh, in our world, you know, if we, if we could you know, do some time traveling and bring them back here and see if they, if they manage to, to continue the same. Way. You know, sometimes uh, people think the word nostalgia means to only remember the good. And it comes from a Greek philosophy school, nostalgia, which means to remember the good and remember the bad and balance them in harmony mm -hmm. to reflect what you can learn from the bad and what you can remember and be like that happy place. So mm -hmm. it is like there's always been from the day of the Greek philosophers that whole just find balance. Technique I read about, I have done it a few times, it's called negative visualization. I don't know if you have heard it because... There is so much yeah. about positivity in our culture, you know, like, ah, be positive, everything will be okay, law of attraction, blah, blah. So the negative visualization actually attacks the problem from another angle, saying that take whatever, let's say, imagine uh, something you enjoy doing right now, and then try to visualize, like, at some point in the future, it could be tomorrow, you don't know, it could be... 50 years from now, you will not be able to do this thing through, I don't know, old age, accident, whatever. And then try to enjoy, like, like just to visualize, okay, I will, mm. I will not be able to walk one day, you know? It could be tomorrow, you don't know. It could be 50 years from now. And then if you really think about this, you know, for five, 10 minutes in the morning, for example, he says, the, the guy actually who's talking about this, then, you know, that day at least, when you are walking, you'll notice how... How good it feels to walk you know all these things we never remember like how good it feels to eat and test things uh to smell things to see things all these things like everybody who is like healthy completely ignores be generous in the words of the buddha thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle and the life of the candle will not be shortened Happiness never decreases by being shared. There is a ripple effect of kindness. Just as anger or fear can be passed on to others, so does a simple act of kindness. A simple smile to someone can inspire them to work better. Why? Because his, his main philosopher is what you think you become, right? If you have that, that kind of like uh, greedy or, or, or being stingy by yourself, that means there's an act of lack you're creating that lack in, in, in you, you know, you're feeling, you know, not enough. I don't have enough. Why don't I give money to you? Because I don't have enough. So I need to keep the money for myself first, you know, before you. That's not generous, you know, being, getting generous means getting rid of this mindset. It's like, I'm being generous to you. Like you don't have the money I have, take it first. You know, it's more like that, the mindset. For the rest of my life now is about mm -hmm. helping others get to the next level but i like it quiet like if i could do it like a quiet uh generosity like in a tweet just put it in social media and change somebody's life i like that you, yeah it's selflessness i don't want to leave the house for it about compassion true story i was we've all seen austin powers and you know fat bastard and me i'm a heavy set person and I was walking through this like really rough neighborhood and there was like about six, seven little kids walking behind me and they all started chanting, can I eat your baby? Which is like a line that fat bastard says. And, you know, and they were giggling while they were doing it, you know, being kids, being kids. But then what I, I was walking along, they were saying it. And then I just suddenly, you know, big guy and I'm carrying a guitar. So, and there's seven kids. So I'm not going to hit, hit them. But I literally just spun around and I went, you can keep your money. You can keep your mojo if I can eat your baby. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Ribs, chili. And the kids didn't know what to think. You know, they just like started giggling nervously because they weren't expecting that. So, I, you know, you choose compassion with bullies because bullies can be like, you know, 
seven-year-olds. The cancel cop was once bullied, but the cancel cop faced his bullies with no fear. And do you know what he did? Whenever the bullies, whenever the bullies tried to abuse cancel cop, he always put a smile on his face. And one day, the bully asked, "Why do you always put a smile on your face when I hurl so many abuses at you every day? I I talk." bad things about your mother i talk bad things about your family and you put a simple smile on your face why and then i say if you give me something and if i don't take it who does the object remain with the person who is giving it so if i don't take the abuses who does the abu- who with whom does the abuses lie with the person who is abusing so that mindset always kept the bullies far away from me and the cancel cop today still cancels a lot of people <laughs> my older brother once told me the best thing to do with a bully is to just stare at them that's advice he actually gave and i think the thing about when i tried it once and i got my ass kicked for doing it <laughs> um but i learned that if i could choose compassion and use humor then you can always get out of like any nasty situation but now and then as the late Ray Liotta says everybody takes a beating <laughs> and I, one one thing uh, buddha uh, this thing he very emphasize on the, the the quote of what you think you become is because when when bully shows up in your life you seriously have to ask ask question about yourself like like what have i done attracted this guy into my life why did he come into my life why did bad boss show up in my life or why did i had a bad wife and all this stuff if this thing shows up you're going to ask yourself question that means you're not taking care of your mind properly your mind is running your world instead of you running your mind i do have to size it up you have to look at the person that you, that is in conflict with you yeah i could take him yeah i could take him uh <laughs> that, that also nonviolence I don't know if it's just the, the the New York part of me is like yeah I'm I'm nonviolent now but it's sometimes you just have to punch somebody but come the purge <laughs> <laughs> it takes It'll be hunting season it with takes a baseball bat use it yeah sometimes you just have to just like take a baseball bat there's a reason why i keep a baseball bat near my front door not because i'm going to hit somebody but if someone comes in on wanted you know you have to at least uh, protect yourself in a pinch that takes you courage see, you see officer i'm on the office softball team <laughs> you know you notice what henry just said sometimes i just want to punch i need to protect myself which means you're telling the universe there are bad guys out there you're attracting those bad guys to you now and soon they're going to show up i definitely agree that i do attract all the wrong people so thank you for yeah and it could be just me i just uh, something about me for the last 2 years i'd been hoping that i wouldn't get a break in and last month i had a break in and they luckily didn't steal my laptop or bigger things but they did steal like my father's wristwatch and he passed away in 2014 and my mother's ring and she passed away in 2019 and her two phones so it was kind of like that but at the same weird way it was like a silver weird lining sort of like that whole letting go of like material wealth that was like the bitter sweet pill to swallow after that but yeah definitely i'm not going to think about any more break-ins you're right serene i'm not attracting any more crack fiends to break into my house please <laughs> you know like like i i in bangkok like i never lock my my front door never lock like like put a lock on it like it's only just latch right it's because if the thief want to come welcome welcome What do you want to do? Steal my bra? <laughs> Bras are expensive. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the only thing expensive I have. <laughs> But if it's your favorite bra, what are you gonna do? Let him take uh, somehow. Uh, Buddha say this: uh, whatever he takes, it will come back twice or three times back to you. Somehow later, 
right? And 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 also like if that person comes in, really there's something for you to learn. Because normally it won't. If you have the mindset like that, you know, whatever, please welcome, take it. It won't because you are not attracting all these teeth. You're attracting guests or people like you comes along. You attract who you are. You know, in Islam, they say when one door shuts, another 10 open in its place. You know, that reminds me of an incident this uh, idiot Sahrid uh, once went through. Not me, Sahrid. I am the cancer cop, this guy. And he <laughs> lost his favorite pouch. And that pouch is the lucky pouch he 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 considers that pouch to be the luckiest pouch and whatever exam he wrote with that pouch on his side he always aced in it like the highest marks in all the subjects he wrote with that pouch and one day he loses that pouch and he just thinks okay it's all over my lucky charm is gone i am useless i'm unlucky uh, but another door opened he got another pouch to put all of his pens in it and once he stopped caring about that old pouch and once he started focusing on not this pouch, but focusing on the subjects he has to study, he still was the topper again. He is in all the subjects again. So that just proves that maybe having that favorite thing uh, and someone taking that away is beneficial. It helps you focus on something uh, real instead of focusing on something that leads to something this real. I slightly disagree because here specifically, I, I live in, in New York and the people don't stop shooting. I don't know if I'm attracting the shoot. It's, it's just there's so many bullets. There's way no, too many bullets. It's because America loves guns. Yes, it's not, too much. It's, 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 it's not New York. It's ev all 50 states, even Alaska. If they, if they just pause the shooting, you know, then... Then I'd be more about, yeah, the universe I'm attracting. I don't think you can attract bullets. They just come no. in. Unless you're a magnet. <laughs> or magneto. <laughs> <laughs> right, but uh, if you correct your mind, like, like if you correct your mind, everything else is correct. Like, like I remember there are a lot of incidents uh, happen where, where a lot of shooting going on and this and that. And in Bangkok, remember, the king were fighting each other. I was there. And I, I never, I, I grow in, in the mindset of like, yeah, I'll, I don't care. I'm there to enjoy my alcohol, to, you know, have a great time and all stuff. The shooting was just going on right beside me. Ping, ping, pang, pang. I was like, eh. <laughs> sure, it was a real shooting and not the PUBG mobile players playing a game. You could, you could hear uh, what the, the, the gun of this M16 was. Sorry. You can hear really, yeah. Serene, that reminds me of the game we play in the Middle East. Is it gunfire or fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Kalashnikov. Nope, that sounds like a Mexican bandit exploding in the three colors of the Mexican flag. No, but like, um, yeah, no, it's uh, like during the Arabic Spring in 2011, it was a bit like that. Like, you know, that I wasn't, there were people freaking out. I wasn't freaking out. Uh, like, I think if you freak out in a shitty situation, then you'll freak out. But if you can learn to be like a Jedi master, like Yoda, it's all gravy, baby. I was, yeah, I was about to quote the, the great Yoda. Is, you, you cannot, you cannot co control what you cannot control. So don't the bullets fly? Hmm. Uh, it, it's, if you don't attract it, it will not come to you, even though you, you can be next to it. And so lightsabers. They have really good aim. They have really good aim. They'll get you. And on a geek fandom, lightsabers don't actually stop bullets. They separate them into fragments. And Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi in the comics that happened. The live ammunition went through his lightsaber, and the fragments came into his shoulder. So he had to run away. A young man, why are you eating that fish? And the man says, "Because I love fish." He says, "Oh, you love the fish." That's why you took it out of the water and killed it and boiled it. He said, don't tell me you love the fish. You love yourself. And because the fish tastes good to you, therefore, you took it out of the water and killed it and boiled it. So much of what is love, right, is fish love, right? And so, young couple falls in love. Young man and young woman fall in love. What does that mean? That means that he saw in this woman someone who he felt 
could provide him with all of his physical and emotional needs. And she saw in this man, somebody she feels that she can write, that was love, right? But each one is looking out for their own needs. Right? It's not love for the other. The other person becomes a vehicle for, for my gratification. Too much of what is called love is fish love. Right? An external love is not on what I'm gonna get, but what I'm gonna give. We had an ethicist, Rabbi Dessler, who said, the people make a serious mistake in thinking that you give to those whom you love. And the answer is, the real answer is, you love those to whom you give. And his point is, if I give something to you, I've invested myself in you, right? And since self-love is a given, everybody loves themselves, now that part of me has become in you, right, there's part of me in you that I love. Right? So, true love is a love of giving, not a love of receiving. Fish love, I don't know, uh, I, I read from this <clears throat> book called uh, Autobiography of, of the Yogi, you know, uh, it says this, all ordinary love is selfish, dark rooted in desires and satisfaction. It's only about himself, you know, like, it's only about like, I wanted something out of her, my happiness is it's, it's, Real, uh, what you call it, dependent on her. Without her, I will be dead. You know, something like that. You know, and then they he go he went on explaining divine love is without condition, without boundaries, without change. The flux of humans' heart is gone forever, and transfixing the touch of pure love. It's like you don't tie something to you. You know, it's like mar for to me, marriage is toxic because you're trying to own something that that you can't be owned. You know you. Can't, it's like he's he she's your property. Like, come on, man! It, it, it's a very uh, selfish mindset of me doing that to to someone else. You know, if 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 you really love her, then let her wanders around. If she comes back as a bonus, if she doesn't, you move on in your life. And there's so much other fish outside. Used <laughs> to be exactly that fish love. What can you give me? What can I do? What do you bring to the table that I will devour? Now it's more like I want to share a brain with somebody without you. I own you because it's part of my brain. So does that make sense? So you're my property, but we share the same brain. You finish my sentences. So it's like soup love. We are one. But can you do it without marrying him? Just just let him be. Well, it's got to be a him. It could be a <laughs> her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woody Allen said, you know, when you go bisexual, you double your chances. Um, I, I think... Thank you. Lo <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, when, you go, uh, when you go searching for love, I mean, like, I am a huge romantic from day one. Like, when I was like a five... I remember maybe age five or six seeing Teen Wolf. For me, it was like the weirdest love story to to define the you know like boy meets girl boy happens to be a werewolf which i can relate to being arab and hairy you know <laughs> uh, in, in later years and um you know but like girl has boyfriend and but then they get together and it's true love oh you know so i kind of thought that that would be the case and then like years later i saw Daniel Sloss's jigsaw and I was like ah I see where I've been going wrong and I think it's just down to like you need to learn to love yourself it sounds so cliche but it's true and the problem is that if you have traumas if you have like a lot of scarring Gibran Khalid Gibran said the strongest souls are seared with scars so I think we just have to learn to love the scars inside and once you love your scars inside, then you can love anybody and their scars inside as well. That's like, wow. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some people think I'm fat. No, it's just a big, massive heart. Uh -huh. covered, <laughs> covered, covered, like my heart is actually measures like from up here to down, like down here. And it's kind of like lopsided. But like, yeah, it's not a belly. It's, it's I'm all heart. Yeah. You're a big hearted man. I am a huge your dating heart. profile. My, my kidneys, my kidneys are the size of kidney beans. 
Like I drink a fuck ton of water, but my heart, my liver is like, you know, like just like a chorizo sausage. No, we call people uh, with big hearts in India, we call them Dilwale. Dilwale? So, yeah. Acha, take it here, Dilwale. Acha. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but my karak chai, I'm very, yeah, Dilwale. All right. I like that. <laughs> you see, one side love is the most powerful feeling in the world. And Shah Rukh Khan said this in a movie. Uh, and if you gamble on, you know, when you gamble on one-sided love, when you love a person, when you give love to a person, if you win, then you're the happiest person on world, in the world. But even if you lose, there's nothing to lose because you're only giving, you're not receiving. It comes back to this Buddha. Buddha said, you know, like attachment leads to suffering. That's that's what he meant as well. Like like we have expectation. Like we want to share our 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 privacy with someone else. We want to have uh, some romantic just that someone else, you know, and then it causes a lot of suffering. That's what a lot of uh, what you call this breakups happen. Uh, divorce is happening. It's because of this. Also, like like you know, uh, we we humans, you know. You know, do you know, do you notice like those who dated, like when we date the first three months to one year, like, like the first time to one year, that's the best time ever. The honeymoon like, period. Yeah. Every, every time like that. And after that, when it goes, it's like you have to endure each other's hell, you know. <laughs> like, do you know where the term honeymoon comes from? No, no idea. <laughs> uh, so the honeymooners? <laughs> no, it's uh, Babylonian, ancient Iraqi tradition where the family of the bride would provide mead, which is a beverage made from honey, for a whole lunar month. So essentially, back in ancient Babylon, a honeymoon lasted a month. Oh. Nowadays, most people spend like, what is it, like a week in the Maldives, <laughs> if they're lucky, you know, or maybe it's like, <laughs> you know, a weekend in Paris or like a week in Hawaii. No, you need to go spend a month. Spend a month. Just spend the month in that honeymoon period when you're together. And like not necessarily marriage, you know, because like, as you said, divorce and stuff, but just like, you know, be together for a month. Just you two focus on you. And the idea of giving, if it's a two-way street, then that's true love. Because as you're giving love, she's going to feel he or she or they will want to return the love to you because you're giving love to them. Aside from what you give to me, what I give to you, what are the thing, the best advice I got about relationships that last is learn to fall in love every day. Because there is the honeymoon period after that. So, you know, I really like your toes. That's why I'm, that's this cycle of learning to fall in love give me some toes and then you just go through all the body parts so you're a foot fetishist at are you no no <laughs> not at all <laughs> i had one of those foot fetish people reach out to me on instagram it was very freaky it was very very it actually happened his handle was foot fetish 21 i guess foot fetish 1 to 20 were taken <laughs> and um he wanted to like he was like can I, like can i see your feet and i was like no like who are you i'm just a guy that likes feet i'm like no what are you wearing i was like i thought okay i'll say the most unattractive <laughs> thing i was like i'm wearing crocs and then he was like can i see a picture i was like no and he was like come on i was like the rolling stones said it best you can't always get what you want <laughs> <laughs> I do know one thing about foot fetish. I did some research. Smellier <laughs> the better. Ew. Oh, that will drive them crazy. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I mean, HRT. You know, my my food will, will you know, my I have a feminine feet a little bit. Of course, they will like it, but you don't have to come and touch it, and uh, it sounds so creepy. <laughs> I mean, uh, in India, we have severe foot fetish because most of our, uh, we are brought up in a way that whenever we respect our elders, we have to bow down to touch the and foot. touch their feet to receive blessings. So foot fetish comes natural in all Indians. <laughs> Some people think that the Middle East is all about the foot fetish because that's the only part of the woman you can see. 
Fish love, sushi love. I don't like any love. I like vegetarian love. <laughs> no killing no killing at greg's we have you covered with the vegan pork sausage roll if you want to try the taste of pork safe abu Kandil, the muslim comedian says it tastes like pork every time i bite into my broccoli i can hear it scream then you must be looking at the wrong broccoli come here and tell me that i you and your ass you punk white boy you faggot you can't touch me, you're not man enough. I eat your a lot, you bitch. You, you hoe. Come and date my face. You the ass for everybody. You got man enough for me. You can't last two minutes in my world, bitch. Look at you scared now, you hoe. Scared like a little white man. Scared of the real man. Up do you love me, baby? If I can't find somebody who love, just keep doing the act over and over. And that mess so muscle memory you'll be like i do like you I, I, the fact i love you my muscle memory has decided when mike tyson says that to me you know like wow <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to fuck me for me to love you <laughs> thank you <for> <laughs> i am that bitch thanks thanks but wow somebody <laughs> must have pissed, pissed them up for him to say that you know like <laughs> right well i would say you know like I don't know. That's what Buddha Buddha was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought Buddha. I would ever hear a comparison to Mike Tyson to but that line. <laughs> Fuck you till you love me. I don't know if Buddha would have been on the uh, under the tree going. Fuck you till you love me, because like you know, if he's Indian, but if he was like you know from China, it would be like I fuck you till you love me. <laughs> I fuck you, fuck you a long you? time. <laughs> Until you love me. <laughs> Just make sure you love me. <laughs> there's Buddha, then there's Yoda, and then right there is Mike Tyson. You know, it's funny. There's an Arabic saying. It actually goes, Hub al bintat nikak, nik al bintat hibak, which basically means you, the girl you love will fuck you, and the girl you fuck will love you. Love and, and, and sex has, has, uh, it's actually not related, but they can they can screw each other up if that's not done properly. Yeah. Unintended. Was, uh, there needs to yeah, be like, a balance between fuck and love. Like like if 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 your sex is great, it won't get you uh, very far ahead in the relationship. But if your sex is bad, definitely we're gonna kill the relationship. Tyson said, I'll F you till you love me. That's the same word every rapist said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Henry, Henry, you need to update the list. Buddha, Master Yoda, Mike Tyson, every rapist. <laughs> if you're going to be with someone and you've made the decision, you are the one. That's and you can bond with them on a physical level, in addition to the other daily stuff that you do. Let's watch a movie. Let's let's talk. Let's uh, ask about our day. But then, if you're bonding on a physical level, I think that's why I like the the clip. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a savage. Uh... I mean, and it, like, obviously, you couldn't say all the stuff he said now <laughs> on stage without the council cops' entire division coming. <laughs> and like, you know, backup. like, yes, you need backup for that one. You, like, like that, like, only like Illuminati high-ranking members can say the shit he said. I just want something that comes back because Serena said something about, you know, you got to let it go, let the, all the love go, and then they'll come back to you. I want to give them a reason to come back. Oh, well, <laughs> control. <laughs> Join the dark side you have. <laughs> the takeaway I took from this is that the world is too small to hate. So just love. Give love. Fish love. Sushi love. Vegetarian love. Rapist love. Any love. <laughs> just love. <laughs> I like the idea of broccoli love. I do, I do want to say that I 
I am dating purposefully. And I had to Google that. If you are purposely dating, it means you know that you're doing it for the end game. We're closing up the, all the loops there that it is ownership in a way. Purposely dating is finding someone that completes everything that you don't. If all your weaknesses are listed here, that other person, it's almost like a Lego thing. You're putting it together, closing the deal, purposely dating. You know, within the universe or attract, act, uh, law of attraction, as they say, uh, I think Eminem puts it in a good way. You better lose yourself in the moment you own it. You better never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Yo. <laughs> you have to cancel yourself, Ray, please. <laughs> <laughs> For mentioning <laughs> that. <laughs> I learned <laughs> that cancel cop is a funny fuck. Um, <laughs> And, um, like, just generally, like, you know, that, you know, that sushi love is definitely better than fish love, I would say. 100%. If we want to go higher state of consciousness to do the enlightenment session higher, the highest state of uh, enlightenment is called Nivarna, it's from Buddha. When you want to reach the state, you have to very, be very, very detached from your physical needs, you know, like, like, what you call these desires, love, loss, all this thing, you know, you have to detach from it. If you're not detaching, you're unable to reach that, that, that state. It's kind of hard, you can, but really, really, really takes a lot of, you know, uh, mindfulness to do it. Or as Al Pacino said in Devil's Advocate, true love is like eating mass quantities of chocolate. You know, if uh, Serene wants to make a rap song, Serena would always be like Buddha. That that could be a part of the rappers. You know, Buddha says, and what you think you become? <laughs> 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 again, again, you go again. Buddha says, <laughs> Buddha said, what you think you become? No, I, I say, say what you what you think you become. <laughs> and then you have a harmonics. He said under a tree. And thousand the years says, <laughs> and the Buddha says find the midway <laughs> it's the only man. said for 500 no desires <laughs>